beautiful soul. Welcome to today's video. <laughs> You've never met me before. My name is Samantha and this is Sacred Solaris. So welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to create and craft this anti-anxiety spell candle. I'm also going to be sharing some ideas and tips around a ritual practice that you can kind of like build around the candle. I feel, firstly, okay, can you just go and grab yourself a cup of tea so we can just relax into this video together? <laughs> um, if we're talking about anti-anxiety, I feel like we need to just be in a nice chilled um, environment. I've got some hibiscus and lemongrass tea, so go pause the video, grab yours, and let's settle in. I really feel like in today's day and age with everything that's going on in the world, it's the holiday season, anxieties, the nervous system, so much is just firing and being like triggered off in the collective at the moment. So the collective society within our families, our friendship circles. And if you are a witch, a healer, an empath, a mystic, it's so easy to be absorbing in all of these um, energies and it become, you know, if you have anxiety or if you are struggling a little bit in your own life, you cannot afford to take on any energy from anyone else. So I think any time that we blend our witchcraft, our practice, in with self-care and something that is for us for healing that intention and that formal work of doing practical um, magic with our hands uh, I think it's just so so powerful and it's not doing magic for a superficial 3d reason it's doing it to heal and to help us um, yes yeah, so I really thought this would be an amazing thing to share for the first time <laughs> The first thing you're going to do is gather your supplies so it's not my place to tell you exactly what to use because you'll have your own relationship with different herbs and crystals and whatever you're going to use personally in your practice. I personally practice the theology of animism which is every single thing in this universe has a spiritual consciousness and I'm using rose, chamomile, oat and mugwort and calling in the plant spirits so a part of my witchcraft I'm calling in the embodiment of each one of these plants to work with me on a physical metaphysical spiritual and emotional level you're also going to need your two candles one is a binding candle and the other is a vessel candle some witches will cast a circle for me i set up sacred space this is having a crystal grid lighting my candles and essentially creating a cozy safe space where i call in the elements and my guides for protection after you set yourself up in your sacred space you have all of your items it's time to begin you want to play some really relaxing music have your cup of tea, something that you can just settle into this space um, and allow yourself to flow. As you can see, we've got the two candles. The one in my hand is the binding and this one here is the vessel candle. You're going to be using your herbal allies and sprinkling them over the top of the vessel candle using the melted wax to bind them all together. I'm going to start picturing my anxieties, my worries, anything that is plaguing me at the moment, coming up or down throughout my body, down through my arm into the binding candle. And when it's lit, we're going to be dripping it down, down, down. You grab your herbal ally as you've called in its spirit and you start to you know, put it and sprinkle it all over the vessel candle. An important part of the ritual for me is calling in the plant spirits that I'm working with. So I normally sit in reverence and take the time to call each ally in um, to work with me in this ritual space. The herbs I've chosen, rose, oat, chamomile and mugwort each have their own physical and spiritual properties but I mainly chose them to heal with my heart space with my anxieties they're very soothing um, and mugwort is very dreamy so each has a beautiful spirit that you can work with the candle that's a light is the binding candle 
So as it slowly drips and melts its wax onto the spell candle, you can pick up your first herbal ally and start to sprinkle it over the top of the spell candle. Each time the binding candle drips, we're seeing our worries and our anxieties melting away, combining with wax and with herbs all over the spell candle. It's such a dreamy and relaxing process and to do the entire candle takes about half an hour, I would say, if you have this size candle. There's really no order as to how you place the herbs. It's really up to your own intuitive feeling. I like to personally um, blend mine with my fingertips, but you also could prepare your herbs with a mortar and pestle. It's really up to you. I'm a big believer in following your gut, following your intuitive wisdom um, and filtering any guidance you receive through your own lens and not just following something blindly because somebody on YouTube tells you to. <laughs> but the process I'm going to go through now is just finishing this side of the candle and then I'll turn it on its side and continue so you can watch that process unfold now. Once you've used all of your herbs, it's time to just use the binding candle to seal any stray bits, like a loose bits of herbs. And I normally like to stand the candle horizontally and allow the wax to drip down and kind of like cross hatch and seal all of the um, herbs and wax together. So it looks like it's like dripping down um, long ways down the candle. And here it is, the anti-anxiety spell candle. I personally like to use this in meditation when I'm in ritual and feeling very anxious if I've got something going on. I'm also going to be showing you now a ritual and how you can utilize this candle um, and build a practice around it. But first, I want to share some words of wisdom on how to manage and maintain your spell candle because sometimes the herbs catch on fire on the outside like you're about to witness. A massive effing fail on my behalf because I'm about to semi-set my altar on fire. Um, this is me panicking, going, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I tried to tip wax on it and then Shit. knocked over <laughs> the candle, creating more fire. Uh, so I'm also not using a fireproof dish. So I know that my mum will be cringing right now watching this because she is always up me about fire safety. So yes, let me show you um, and bestow some tips upon you. If this happens like this, where all the herbs catch on fire, blow the candle out safely, trim away the edges like this where the herbs are that they can catch on fire. Now, sometimes the wick is really long too, so you just have to literally trim the wick so the wick isn't as long. And then look at this ready, light it, and it's back to a beautiful normal size candle. But in all seriousness, fire safety is so important and use a fireproof dish, okay? Be safe. And now it is time for the ritual. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is take a nice deep breath and really come into this moment. So breathe in and out. And as you breathe out, feel your body soften. I want you, all of you watching now, take a nice deep breath in and out. Um, and I'm going to burn some of my rosemary here. Just allow the sacred smoke to cleanse this space and my aura. 
you can substitute this for whatever herb it is that you work with personally in your practice. Allow the smoke to cleanse and clear. This is the time for you to call in your guides, call in your deities, your helping spirits. So what I'm doing now is calling in the deities and the ancestors that I work with closely, the ones that I want to be present and surround me. So I suggest that you do this also. Take time to call in your higher self and any helping spirits in the unseen realms that you work with. A part of my personal practice is singing and chanting and using instruments like my rattle, my drum and also my singing bowls. So in whatever way you like to call in or to honour the helping spirits, you can do that as well. Whether it's singing, chanting, spoken word, maybe leaving an offering, whatever it may be. But as you can see here, I am chanting with um, Hecate. And I just want you now to state your intention of why you're doing this. Why are we doing this ritual? We are doing it to release anxiety, release worries and fears. We're gonna take some time to call in the plant spirits that are on the spell candles. And when you're ready, you're gonna grab the spell candle and light it. Seeing all of these anxieties, all of these troubles that you've poured into it, binding, combining with the herbs. As the spell candle starts to burn, it's now time to grab your pen and paper. And I want you to start to write down the list of things that you need to release. This is the releasing part of our ritual where we can let go of anything that is burdening us and holding us back. So now that I have written all that I want to release on this piece of paper, I'm going to read it out loud. And when you're ready, you're going to set this on fire. I release these worries. I release these anxieties. I call in Hecate to take them from me. And after the flames have gone out, I'm going to cleanse again with the sacred herb, with the smoke. The final step of the ritual is getting the ashes from what we released from the piece of paper and burying them in the ground. This is really symbolic of burial, of releasing and funeral. It's also about us getting our hands in the dirt and the grit and really earthing ourselves as we really see the ashes and the remains of this, um, of all of the anxieties that we wrote down and releasing them into the earth. So not only have we released them through fire, but we're also going to release them um, with, with earth as well. So we're going to grab the ashes, grab the remains of the old anxieties, and we're going to find a place in the earth and we're going to really dig this little hole and I want you to place your hands on the earth and feel into that energy, feel into the energy of Gaia, into the grandmother. And when you're ready, grab these ashes and scatter them into the earth. 
these are the remains, these are the ashes of the old, ashes of the anxiety. And when you're ready, I want you to bury them and give them to the grandmother. <sighs> and this ritual is obviously very condensed, but it just gives you some ideas that you can use as like framework to build a ritual practice around this candle. I think anytime we, like I said before, we use our witchcraft and meld it with self-care, with intention for healing, we have so much power to um, create great change. And I'm really looking forward to hearing if you create this candle or maybe you create a very similar spell candle. Um, let me know. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that there's many more to come. If you'd like to join my online community, I have Patreon and there's a link down below where you can check it out. I've got lots of tiers for people who are beginning on their spiritual and witchcraft journey with a monthly class. And I've also got forecasts and uh, lots and lots of goodies. You can check out my services on my website, which is sacredsolaris.com. I will see you next week in next week's video. Um, and yeah, subscribe if you haven't. Comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Bye, lovelies.